Hey everybody, it's Mark Thompson, and we're so delighted to have with us today a man who really inspires me as a leader who is really planning for building on an incredible brand and also transforming his company for the future. So thank you so much for being with us, John, today. I'm, I'm delighted to have a conversation. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you. You know, John, I think about Hershey, and it's hard not to get a smile on my face. That's must be a very rewarding part of being in an iconic American family brand that has touched lives all over the world uh, and made each day a little happier place. Tell me about how the idea of having the sector of the business that you're running around entertainment and theme parks, when you add that to an iconic brand that's in a different area of, of consumer products, could you talk about how you think about that holistically um, as a Hershey organization and, and your role in it? Yeah, I, I definitely will. And um, we always like to remind uh, everyone that our founder, uh, Milton S. Hershey, came up with this idea, you know, 80, 90 years ago. Uh, and he had this idea called uh, One Hershey and, and Teamwork Sells the Hershey Idea. And he pointed out that all of the entities that he created, and, it, and to your point, it's the chocolate company is the primary thing that everybody think of. And with those iconic brains of Hershey Bar, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the Hershey Kiss, uh, but he also had ancillary businesses such as ours in Hershey Entertainment Resorts. And he wanted to make sure that the consumer who didn't know the difference between his individual uh, uh, businesses, and they shouldn't know the difference, that we as one group working together are here just to promote that Hershey idea, which is sweetness everywhere you go. And, and that does entail the little bits of sweetness that you have and everything from the Hershey Kiss uh, to, to what we do is we try and provide smiles to families, multi-generational families here at Hershey Park and the Hotel Hershey and the Hershey Lodge. And the amazing, amazing part about our company is we are owned uh, ultimately by the Milton Hershey School, uh, which is a home for underprivileged boys and girls from kindergarten through 12th grade. So everything that we do goes back to that amazing, amazing goal and core purpose of ours in supporting the Milton Hershey School. I, I love that. It's so remarkable to think that it's possible to have the legacy of a great American iconic brand be providing that sort of pay it forward for communities. Could you talk about how that works? You've got uh, availability and, and, and as a financial structure, both uh, in the equity markets as well as the private markets. Could you talk about how for other CEOs, kind of what is your your cap structure and, and how that works then to, to pay it forward for the- Yeah, so uh, the Milton Hershey School, um, Mr. Hershey, when he created, he left all, all of his, um, uh, of his earnings and, and all of his assets to support the Milton Hershey School. So him and his wife, Catherine, uh, way before it was cool to go ahead and, and give, give and pay it forward, uh, to your point, he did it. And to the point when he originally did it, the New York Times, it took two years for it to be reported. So he didn't do it for the glamour. He only did it, he and his wife did it, because they knew it was the right thing to do. And what started off for an underprivileged uh, white boys, honestly, and, and there was you know, 27 boys, I believe, in the, the original program. And now it serves over 2,100 students every year from K through 12. And so what he did is he left all of his assets to the school and created the Milton Hershey School Trust. And the trust's sole responsibility is to make sure there's funding in perpetuity for the Milton Hershey School. So now they're approximately about an $18 billion trust. And it's there to continue to grow uh, the Milton Hershey School. So our one shareholder is the, the trust to support the school. So we have that great balance of absolutely having a fiduciary responsibility. We pay a dividend every year based on how well we do. So we absolutely have that economic responsibility, that fiscal accountability. And the wonderful part about, about our company is we also have that responsibility to support the school in other ways. And that's everything from a, a, a program called Project Fellowship in which we have about 12 of our team members support an individual house uh, over at the Milton Hershey School. And we divide, uh, divide our teams up and we provide programs with the schools, uh, I'm sorry, with, with the individual student homes. And based on what the house parents want, we'll sit down for dinner, set up activities, give them tours of what we do. But we also work with the educators at the Milton Hershey School. And we provide classroom instruction, we provide internship opportunities, we provide jobs to those that graduate uh, both from the school 
uh, from a high school level, but also when they go off in the world in, in their specific trades and or undergraduate and graduate degrees, we look for the opportunity to bring them back and to hire them on full time. Uh, and then the overall responsibility also of making sure that we manage the brands and keep the brand uh, integrity uh, that we all have to support Milton Hershey School, Hershey Entertainment Resorts, of course, but also the Hershey Company itself. Because as we mentioned with the Hershey idea, consumers don't know the difference and, and they shouldn't. So we want to make sure we uphold those same familial uh, fam family values uh, that the Milton Hershey School as well as the Hershey Company have. I can't think of anything sweeter than chocolate than paying <laughs> forward to family. And right. uh, yeah. this notion of doing that, many businesses today, epic global multinational businesses are connected with a family that has made some decisions about the future. Could you talk about not being a family member and leading an organization in which the, the, the fortunes and values are completely intertwined. You've been talking about several of them. What would you share with your colleagues about what to know that might be unique about working with a, a family and a trust? You know, it, it's interesting. And I've, and I've had the opportunity to work with sports teams prior to coming to here. And, and not while I didn't enjoy uh, doing my very best to make billionaires richer. Uh, at the end of the day, it, it, that's really what it is. And uh, we, do, we did care about the family of the experiences that people have when they came to the various ballparks. But at the end of the day, you're, you're really looking at that game or that season. Uh, we're here, you know, uh, Hershey Entertainment Resorts has been around since 1927. Uh, and so when, you know, my day will come, uh, hopefully not soon <laughs> as the CEO, and the person who has the opportunity to fill my, to fill my shoes um, when they come into this role, they have that role and responsibility for their time as well. And we don't judge our success solely on financials. It's what are we giving back to the school and support the community in which the school, uh, the school thrives. So it is such a great responsibility. And, and one of the stories I love to tell Mark is when I first came here and, and immediately coming from the sports world, I remember being here about three weeks and somebody was, uh, was in a meeting and they talked about lowering the prices of food and beverage. And of course, my, my background immediately started thinking, okay, we're gonna pick it up in volume or the overall experience will be better and the length of stay will be longer because we're gonna generate more uh, overall income and in, in term profitability based on that one guest visit. So I started talking about that and around the room, they looked at me like I was foreign uh, and just crazy. And they said, no, it, it's really just the right thing to do. We, we have this epic brand and this responsibility that we're not looking for a one-time visit. We're not looking for the lifespan of that individual consumer that we talk so much. This is a global responsibility that we want to have what people expect from this, from these great brands of ours. Uh, and, and to be able to have that epic responsibility perpetuate well beyond this, this individual consumer and generations. Uh, we want to look at things for families for generations to come. That point of view being one that is increasingly, I think, admired, as you said, before it was hip you were very much uh, framing the world that way. And I think about now all the research that's being done about engagement with employees and with customers and having now what has kind of gone from philanthropy to charity to corporate social responsibility. And now it's ESG, it's all yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> we're you know, really taking action and it's wonderful to see that. And, and it's great to see Gen Z stepping into the fray and thinking about what we could do for people and planet and for, for communities and society. You've got people of all generations who work for you. You have an army of young people working at your parks. Could you talk about what you know uniquely about the youngest generation, the largest generation now that is coming to work and, and what, what we should know about them uniquely from maybe other generations? To your point, we're one of the largest employer, uh, employers of minors in the state of Pennsylvania. So, um, and, and this is before the, you know, the labor shortage that we all think of now. Uh, for years, we've been hiring 14 and 15 year olds and, and 16 and 17 year olds. And we're not hiring them uh, just to be able to build, fill voids. We try to bring them in at 14 and 15 to start building their careers, to, to start having them understand how business works. And we, we joke that some of these kids, when they, when they go to their college application, some of them had managed million dollar businesses. Uh, we have concession stands that over the course of the summer, you know, do a million dollars in, in net revenue. And these individuals have such great experience and skills over a number of years that they learn that they really have uh, an awful lot to tell should they choose to go to undergraduate. 
in a lot of cases, you know, we forget about people that go into trades. And, and some of our trades are really struggling with continuing to fill some of those roles. And we tend to focus as a society sometimes on higher education as the only way to advance your career. Um, so we, we are so excited to bring these, these young students in and to be able to start working with them as, and helping them develop into the people they want to be. But absolutely the expectation to, as you mentioned, uh, what environmental, social governance, you know, ESG buzzwords are, they may not know exactly what it means, but they understand working for a higher purpose. Uh, we have opportunities when we bring the uh, you know, 2,000 students from the Milton Hershey School, and we'll have a, an opportunity for them to come to Hershey Park, especially this past year during, during COVID, uh, that we created an opportunity for, for just the students and, and the teachers and the administration team to come over and experience the park. And we got to see the smiles directly on the kids' faces, the students. And our 14 and 15 year olds and, and 16 and 17 year olds got to see you know, in a direct way the impact that they were making on these student lives. And it, it's not in, in the profitability to be able to continue to fund the school. That, that's a side benefit. In this case, seeing the pure joy that you get from these individuals, uh, the average income of a family that, that uh, the kids attend a Milton Hershey School is around $23,000 a year. So when you think about this, without the school, these kids wouldn't have the opportunity to, to attend such an a, a, a illustrious school and to provide the education that they have. But they sure as heck also wouldn't have the opportunity to go and enjoy the rides and attractions and the entertainment and experience the opportunity to interact with the, with the product characters. When Hershey Bar comes up and you know, smiles and high fives yet, uh, the, you know, the smiles on these kids' faces and, and our younger generations get to see that. And they know that the hospitality business is, is more than just a p and They understand at the end of the day that all we're trying to do is put more smiles on people's faces. And it starts with making it a great work experience and in turn as a great work experience. That same enthusiasm and excitement does you know, um, get, you know, go into the guest experience as well. When you think about the fact that they have had that privilege now of being able to be accountable for a job, showing up to work, yeah. getting their act together to be able to be presentable and be service oriented and maybe even manage a million dollar business. What a level of empowerment that gives a sense of agency. A lot of kids and teens are feeling isolated or not having the opportunity to really feel like it matters that they show up. And it seems to me that would be at the center of it. You must find yourself creating some sort of training context for the, the people. Could you talk a little bit about how, how, how you really do engage that generation and, and thinking about being other oriented and being service oriented? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we, did, we, we continue to uh, improve and innovate our, our training. And it's so funny when, when I first was introduced to the hospitality world, to your point, I got a training manual. I went to a class, I finished, and then I was in the workforce. And yeah, yeah, I used to joke that I got a map of the stadium and keys and then I went and, and that was it. And if we had one or two trainings a year, that was it. Uh, this day and age, especially with, with the younger kids, um, we, we find, hey, we've got to get it on the phone. We've got to get it on the iPad. Uh, the idea of in-person training was never more apparent than it was during COVID. And we need to continuously train our team members. What did they learn that, that, one, inter, you know, that one individual day? what they learn from that one guest interaction, especially the ones that go, that go poorly. And one of the things that we, we talk about is guest recovery. And you hear that a lot, but we tend to focus too much on the guest recovery and how did we, how did we help with the guest? And we forget, hey, how do we help our team member? How do we help them recover from a bad experience? Uh, and we've even you know, started putting up signs this year in our park to remind our guests to treat our team members uh, with the same courtesy and respect that we want to treat them. Uh, but, but having that opportunity to understand and give our team members a second, a third, a fifth chance, because this is, it, it's an everyday learning experience. And I've already made you know, so many mistakes today, and my team is kind enough to let me know when I am failing them uh, in the moment or in, you know, at the end of a meeting. And we need to provide that same opportunity for, for these younger kids every day. Uh, so the continual perpetual training is so very important uh, in understanding how we work. When you think uh, about the journey that you've had and looking back at, let's say, an entry-level version of yourself mm -hmm. and you're stepping 
in bigger shoes and you were starting to discover this new role. You've been at Hershey for a very long time. As you said, you were in, um, in, an, in another framing of the, the sports world before this. What, what advice would you give to a younger version of yourself uh, that you wish you knew that has been something that you've absorbed and, and benefited from over time? Um, I, the one thing I've done well, and I'll start with that because the list of things that I could improve upon are, uh, we don't have enough time to go through them. Uh, the one thing for whatever reason, I was taught at an early age to have a voice and to make sure when provided the opportunity to share that voice to do so. So that's the one thing that helped me throughout my entire time. And as my missteps went along um, you know, throughout my career, I, I was able to share my voice and to explain potentially you know, how I made that error uh, and, and what, what provided me, um, that, that, that led me down the wrong path. Uh, so if I can look back and give better advice, it's owning your mistakes as quickly as you possibly can. Um, understanding that people are giving you that feedback uh, and sometimes they don't frame it in the best of ways, but, but people are doing that for your betterment. And to understand that and to be able to digest that and understand their position. And even if you don't necessarily agree with it, understand their position better so you can improve moving forward. Even if you go down that same path and you make that same choice, potentially you provide the person you're working with a better example or a better reason for your choices. Um, I'm an introvert and uh, choosing the hospitality field, I always joke with people that, hey, it probably wasn't the best career choice, uh, but I will say understanding how introvert, uh, introversion can still be a great opportunity to interact with, with great, huge numbers of people. And that's the other thing I learned throughout the time. It, it's finding, finding those opportunities, when to be able to interact and when to be able to try to be more social and more engaging. Uh, here in this hospitality world, you, you can balance both. Uh, you just don't need to be a person who just wants to run around and talk to everybody. Uh, you, you can find your balance and you can find your voice uh, appropriately at the right time. It's an interesting framing of the process of thinking of self-discovery as an introvert or an extrovert. It feels to me, from my experience across dozens and dozens of chief executives and boards that I've worked with, is that it's very common to have even Hollywood stars who become business leaders who are actually introverted as well. I've met Broadway performers <laughs> who are introverted. And it feels that there is a, an opportunity for people like you, and I'll also include myself among them. Uh, I'm quite introverted. And I find that we're all engaged in the passion around the project. And uh, there's an opportunity to actually come off more authentically when we're not needing attention what we're needing is connection. And you're, you're reaching out, you have a purpose that you believe in, you have uh, a mission that you're on. And uh, my, my, um, my brilliant professor spouse, Benita, to Dr. Benita Thompson talks about how the cause has charisma. That sometimes when I'm not feeling it as a leader, <laughs> it's that it's so important that we show up for what we're accomplishing as a team. Yeah because it's never been about me. So I, 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 I go on a little bit about that because I think there, is a, there can be a power in the introversion that allows you to be putting other people on stage and uh, to do what Drucker said, you know, the job of a leader is to find, develop, and recruit more leaders. <laughs> Absolutely. And that, that's really well said about having, having a passion, the commitment towards something. And you kind of forget about the situation that you're in because you're so committed to the end goal. And in our case, it's given back to the Mountain Hershey School. And how it manifests itself is by inspiring individual team members, but also inspiring guests. You know, we always joke early on in my career here at Hershey Entertainment Resorts. I remember going out during the rain, uh, we were walking to the park and uh, the person who I was working with was general manager of the park. And he had two umbrellas that uh, he, was, he was walking to the park with. And it didn't take me long to figure out that he was walking with two to be able to give away one and really surprise and delight that individual guest who is either hiding under shelter or on their way trying to get their family either to the next attraction or back to their car. And really quickly, I found, wow, you can find the simplest of ways of surprising and delighting these guests uh, and to be able to give back. And it, uh, knowing you have that greater cause of, in this case, entertaining people, letting them have their, their, their break away from their own individual troubles and that's what you know, Hershey Entertainment Resorts is all about, allowing for that family connection. 
John, you're an inspiration. I love this notion that you share. If the role of a leader and of the CEO is to be always carrying two umbrellas, uh, because we need to take care of ourselves. And more importantly, we're there to care for the people who are leading the, the parade and, and the impact every day. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share that. And I, I can't wait to have opportunities to uh, inter- be, uh, uh, be a part of that wonderful mission to have fun together. Um, Thank you, Mark. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And I, I, uh, I'm already learning so much from you. I can't wait to continue to uh, develop our relationship and learn more from you. Thank you so much. Thanks, John.